If we're going to shoot a ton of bullets, then we need to learn how to use object pulling. So what is object pulling and how do we use it? Well, we typically use it when we are creating a bunch of objects over and over again and then destroying them after X amount of time. And a good example would be, well, shooting bullets. We create a bullet projectile, it fires off, and then after X amount of time, we destroy the game object. And this actually costs the CPU a ton of processing power that we don't necessarily have to spend. And that's where object pulling comes in. Instead of creating and destroying the game's objects, we instead create them and then add them into a pull of these game objects when we no longer use them. And then when we need to use it again, we just see if the pool has any of these objects in it. If it does, we take from the pool. And if it doesn't, we create one and then later add it to the pool. And that's essentially object pulling. Opening up the scene, you can see that I've set up a ton of machine guns that will fire off as soon as I press play. And this is all well and good. They're each creating a ton of bullets by themselves. And after X amount of time, you'll see some of these bullets will disappear. But the problem is our frame rates are dipping. And that's because we aren't using object pulling. Every single time a bullet is created, it is instantiated, and then it is destroyed. So we are both calling for the CPU to allocate memory to instantiate the bullet and also we are calling on the garbage collector to free up memory which is just costing us a ton in cpu cycles that we don't need to spend also a quick shout out to assets 3d who i used this free little machine gun for this tutorial it's actually a very nice quality and does come with animation so big shout out to them but right back to object pulling let's go over the bullet script as well as the bullet spawner let me open this up and see what we're working with now we'll revisit the script in a moment and go over the object pull components, but for now I just want to point out the parts that have to involve with just instantiating and destroying the bullets as if we weren't using object pulling. So here we have a speed, we have a rigid body that we're going to use later, and then we have time until destruction and then the current time for when we need to reset that, but that's for object pulling. So coming in here in awake, we grab the rigid body and then we also set the current time to time until destruction destruction so it's going to destroy in about five seconds at the start of this it's going to apply velocity and then an update it's just seeing if five seconds have elapsed if it has then we destroy the bullet we come down here a little further and you can see here apply velocity is just applying that speed and transform forward so it is going to shoot the bullet forward and then the destroy bullet will come in here if we are using pool it will release it but we'll talk about that in a moment really it's just going to come here and destroy it and that's pretty much it for if we were just instantiating and destroying the bullet like normal. And the same goes for the bullet spawner, which I'll click over to now. We can see here we need a bullet prefab. We have a few things that have to involve object pulling that I'll cover in a moment, but just pointing out the things that are involved with instantiating and destroying the bullet. Here we have in the start function an invoke repeating. This is just going to call this function every single 0.05 seconds. And then if we come down here and see what that is, it says instantiate bullet. And this is just a boolean that says if we are using object pulling, we'll go through that. But instead, we are just instantiating it here. We're giving it the transform and position of the spawner. Coming back to the scene, you'll see that I've selected all the bullet spawners and we're not using object pulling still. And I'm gonna come over to this window, go to analysis and then go to profiler. And if I press play, we can actually see in real time what is going on in the spikes and memory that we're using. And you'll notice here that I've marked off some of these boxes. I only have the garbage collector set here so we can see these spikes. And if I pause it and kind of drag through, you'll notice this memory allocation here will spike every now and then. There it is, 1.1. And if we expand this out, you can see what is causing it. As you would imagine, it is, oh, not you. Yes, it's instantiating the bullet. And although 1.1 kilobyte doesn't seem like a lot, when we are strapped for resources like we would be on a Quest 2, having this happen every few seconds is incredibly costly. And so we should probably avoid it at, well, all costs. Let's see if we can fix this with object pulling. And so I'm going to dive back into the script and kind of explain what is going on when we're using object pulling. And then I'm gonna click this little box here and we'll see the results. So opening up the scripts again, 
The first script I want to go over is the bullet spawner this time. So see here, we are importing using Unity Engine.pool. This is going to give us access to, well, Unity's object pool, which was added in Unity 2021. So you see here, I have an object pool of type bullet. And if you see here, this is where I instantiate it, or this is where I construct it. This is where I build it, is this line right here. To see all the things that we can actually do with an object pool, or if I peek at the definition here by right-clicking peak definition. You can see that as a few things in the constructor that we can feed it, it can have a create function. So this is what you would use if you're instantiating objects and you want to do certain things. So if the pool is empty, you would say, okay, this is my create function. This is how I add more or new items to my pool. It also has an action on git. So if we want to retrieve things from the pool, this is what it uses. Action on release. If we need to return things back to the pool instead of deleting them, that's what it does here. Action on destroy. If there is a rare case in which you do want to destroy the objects instead of returning them to the pool, you would give it a function for this. We have a collection check here, which we can set to true or false. I've heard that you can save some CPU cycles by setting this to false. What it does is it checks to see if an object's already been returned to the pool. If you're 100% certain that your code's not going to mess up, you can save some CPU cycles by not setting that or setting it to false. I don't want to touch it. We have a default capacity. This is going to be the normal capacity that it wants to sit at or begin with. So it will ramp up and fill up the pool to that default capacity. And then max size, don't be deceived. This doesn't mean that it, the pool will never go above this. It it just means that if the pool ever does go above it, any object above it, it will just delete down until, you know, it's back to what max size it wants to be at. And yeah, these are all the things we can feed into the constructor to build it. And the main ones that I played with for this tutorial are just the create function, the action on get, and then the action on release. To see what these functions are doing, I have the instantiate bullet one that I feed it. You can see it here. All I am is instantiating a prefab and returning it. That's it for the action on git. You have to make sure that it is, let's see, it is requiring a action of bullet type. So I have to have a bullet being passed in and then it comes in here. I am taking the bullet. I am giving it the same transform in, or sorry, position and rotation as the bullet spawner. I am also calling that bullet.set pool and passing in the bullet pool that this spawner is using. So if we go over to the bullet script, you'll see here, all it does is just make sure that's set. And that's so when we go to destroy it, instead of actually destroying it, it says, well, the pool's populated, it belongs to an object pool. So I'm just going to release this object instead of destroying it. And then finally, I am taking the bullet and setting it to active. And the reason I set it to active is because again, back in the bullet script, if we look over at two, 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 two on enable, we have apply velocity again, and then I reset the timer. So it's like we're just spawning a brand new bullet. It's just a big reset, honestly. Right, so what happens when we need to return a bullet to the pool? Well, this function is what we're going to use. See, it passes in a bullet like the get bullet script, but instead of setting it active, we set it to inactive. And that's actually called over in our bullet script when we're destroying it pool.release this, right? Release, and then we're passing in the bullet, comes over here and it says, okay, we're setting that thing we just passed into false, and then we're just gonna return it to the pool. And that's it. Last few things I wanna point out is if we are, if this is set to true, this is where we get a bullet from the pool. And then I also have bullet active versus inactive. These are just counts of what's currently outside of the pool and what's not outside of the pool. And we can see that in the editor. And yeah, let's return to the editor and see if this actually works. Now, before I start using object pulling, I want to do one more check on how our FPS is looking here. If I just don't use object pulling, you can see it starts to dip and dip and it is sitting around 80, dipping down to 70 every now and then. So that is the metric we're sitting with frames per second. Now let's stop this and see what happens when we object pull. So let's see if our FPS improves at all using object pulling. I'm gonna go ahead and click that box, press play. And initially you're gonna see the bullets active. This is the pool filling up. And then once it reaches a certain point where we don't need any more, it's gonna start trading it. So this is returning objects to the pool very quickly and then putting it back here. And then if we look at the FPS, you can actually see that it has pushed it up closer to 90 frames per second as opposed to sporadically jumping between 70 and 80, which 
small improvement, not bad. And you have to think if you're working on a bigger project, this might save you very, very crucial CPU that you need. All right, and so if I come over here again, go to analysis and profiler, you'll notice once I press play, oh, let me clear this really quick. Yes, if I press play, again, it's gonna start off and it's gonna have these spikes because we're still initializing, let me pause it, all the objects for the object pool. And so you'll see that if we go to allocations, it's sitting at 1.3, but once it reaches that about 100 number, once the pool is full and it is now cycling properly, all of those allocations are gonna disappear. And there it goes. No longer are they there. If I drag through here, you'll see that the allocation does not change throughout the entire scene. And that is the power of object pooling. Those are those little CPU cycles that we have now saved. So feel free to play around with this one. I hope you found it useful. I know it is a little complex. I know that's a lot of scripting, but please try this out, experiment, and see if you can improve your FPS using object pooling. And as always, liking and subscribing is the best way to support me at this time. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.